membership for the virtual asset industry. That's also anonymous thing. Yeah, I believe our industry is trying to use technology to automate the whole regulatory process. We don't believe any government, any people would really you know, have it better than the algorithm and the programmable token. And number three, once these rules are set and accepted by the G20, every one of you will submit yourself to the discovery requirement of SEC in the United States and also IRS rules there in the United States. I think that's totally unfair. Therefore, Hong Kong and access here in Singapore and plus AD, uh, ADCA in Australia, all those three major organizations from our industry are really against the data. And we are going to be in Osaka to speak against the data with new rules. We believe our industry will learn from our own lesson and, and our technology will be efficient enough and sufficient enough to take care of the regulations by right. itself. Right. So, uh, good point by Jane that um, the industry itself has the power of regulating itself and not by it. Just, just uh, very quickly, uh, speaking for the Philippine blockchain uh, industry and also speaking based on the, the Philippine experience, yes. this is actually a development okay. uh, in the Philippines simply because there's this unique culture that the Philippine is watching one year, two years, two years, some of the local projects in the Philippines are even on giving a registry, applying for a government license. Uh, and uh, the, the problem is because of the uncertainty in some of the anti money laundering yes, yes. Uh, in the Philippine uh, legal framework. Uh, this has created this vacuum or this um, the regulatory gap where you have projects who want to register and be licensed in the Philippines. Yes. So that hopefully that will assist in, the, in them having access for banking services. Right. Yet the central bank would reject their application right. simply because the central bank also does not have, or the anti money laundering council, yes. the financial intelligence unit, do not have jurisdiction when it comes to these matters. Right. So, what, what this FATF recommendations will do is to pressure the, the, the lawmakers in the Philippines to amend the law yes. and finally recognize crypto exchange service providers, okay. or what is referred to as virtual asset service providers, mm -hmm. the covered persons and be subject to this mm -hmm. So that um, in moving forward, any blockchain project is dealing with crypto, mm -hmm. will now be able to register with a central bank right. and the money laundering council. Right. And hopefully this will validate the legitimized services. Okay. Thank you, Reverend. Um, one last question I have for all of you, you might want to uh, answer this. So we see a lot of interest in rising STOs, which are security token offerings. Um, so do you think it's actually feasible to operate STOs in the jurisdiction? And how should the teams prepare, prepare for that if they're launching uh, successful STOs? Um, uh, maybe I can come a little bit on this. Uh, STO will be with real assets to back up and the revenue generated and the profit generated back to the STO. Yes. That is the link. If there is no such link, that is a scam. Put it this way. If I'm not mistaken, the previous so-called ICO scam, some of those they are actually with the uh, bad asset, bad asset to support. Yes. But it's not all scam. Okay. I can say some of the ICO is STO, but there is no STO before. Yes. But right now, the regulators in each jurisdiction is trying to STO with uh, you know either SF, SFC in Hong Kong, SEC, or uh, you know MAS in Singapore. Yes. Is to backlight the radar of regulations. Right. So I would think STO will be our future, as Jay just mentioned during his speech. Mm -hmm. If you are not in the STO, you either have a back-end asset, a solid asset to back up. Otherwise, it's not going to fly for the project. Okay. So that's my comment. Okay. Thank you. Well, I personally invested in uh, STO exchange, and also I was leading the GSR Capital's uh, investment in Zeros uh, exchange. Right. So I uh, know the whole industry inside out, I would say. I believe SPO has a great future. As I just mentioned earlier in my keynote speech, once we follow the rules, again, we don't follow one universal rules, we follow
follow each jurisdiction specific rules, and we use technology to improve our industry, our living, and our economy. And most of all, we have to believe in entrepreneurship and believe in innovation. And every one of you here will engage in a skill rather than go for ICO or go for IPO. Those are outdated. We have to go with this skill. And this skill will have a lot more future. Okay, now I think that's, uh, that's for this panel. Thank you everyone for this great discussion. If the audience have any questions, please let us know. Um, these are the ones you want to reach out uh, if you have any questions. Um, thank you again, um, and I'll hopefully see you again. Thank you.